Hey guys, so in this video I will be demonstrating the bisection method which estimates the function's root as the midpoint between the two bounds. So let's go ahead and get started. This is my given equation and bounds and I need to have an error tolerance for my estimate of less than 10%. So the first step is going to be to graph the function which I've already done here in MATLAB so that it's nice and pretty for you. The next step is to perform our first iteration and I'm actually going to continue this on the next page. So the first step in my iteration is to determine my lower and upper bounds, which were actually already given to us in the original problem. The lower bound is 0 0.5, and the upper bound is 1.5. Next, we need to calculate the root estimate using the bisection midpoint equation which I've expanded on down here in this blue box. So XR is our estimated root location, XL is the lower bound, and XU is the upper bound. And in this case, we've already defined the pieces to this equation. So we can just plug them in, and we will get our root estimate. Step C is to calculate the function value at our lower bound and our root estimate. So after substituting these values into our function, I get negative 4.5 and 1. Step D is to multiply these two terms together. And this is important because this will tell us which section of our bracket our actual root is in. So let's go down this red box here for a minute. We can have two different cases. The first case is if this product is less than zero. That means the function signs are opposite, so one is positive, one is negative, and therefore the actual root is in the lower section. And thus, if we need to perform another iteration, we would set the upper bound equal to our root estimate and keep the lower bound the same. Case two is if the product is greater than zero, which means that the function signs are the same, so they're both positive or both negative and therefore our actual root is in the upper section. If this is the case and we need to perform another iteration, then we will set our lower bound equal to our root estimate and keep the upper bound the same. So in this case, our product is less than zero. So that means we have a case one situation. And therefore, if we need to perform another iteration, we're going to set x upper equal to our root estimate and keep our lower bound the same. The last step in our iteration is to determine if we need to perform another iteration. And we'll determine that by looking at the error. So I'm going to use the error outlined in purple down here. And the reason I'm using percent relative magnitude approximate error is because I don't know the actual root location. So I'm going to compare my current estimate to my previous estimate. In this case, our current estimate 
is 1, and our previous estimate is 0 because we don't have a previous iteration. And this will give us a 100% error, which oddly enough should make sense because this is our first iteration. So this tells us that we need to perform a second iteration. But before we do that, I'm going to go back to my graph and I'm going to give you a visual representation of what we just did. So this was my lower bound. And this was my upper bound. And I calculated that my root estimate is right here. So this is my lower section, and this is my upper section. And I determined that my actual root is in the lower section, and so I got rid of this upper one. So now I'm going to move on to doing the math for the second iteration. So the first thing I'm going to do is determine my lower and upper bounds. And that will be 0 0.5 and 1. Step B is to calculate my root estimate. So that's really just a plug and chug. And that gives me 0 0.75. Step C is to calculate the function value at the lower bound and our root estimate. I did these backwards. I want to change that real quick just so I can stay consistent. Okay, the function value at the lower bound is negative 4.5, and the function value at our root estimate is negative 2.34375. Step D is to multiply those two terms together. And that will give me 10.54689. And so this product is greater than zero. So hopping back to our previous slide, that means that we have a case two situation right here. So therefore, the function signs are the same. In this case, they're both negative. And our actual root is in the upper section. So therefore, if we need to perform another iteration, we're going to set the lower bound equal to our root estimate, and we're going to keep the upper bound the same. So our lower bound will become 0 0.75, and our upper bound is still going to be 1. The last thing we need to do for our second iteration is again calculate the error. So this time our root estimate is 0 0.75 and our previous root estimate is 1. And this gives us an error of 33.3%.
which is less than the 100% error we had on the previous iteration, but it's still not less than 10%, so therefore we will need to perform a third iteration. Before I do that though, I'm going to graph my second iteration. So this is my upper bound, and this is my lower bound. My root estimate was about right there at 0.75. So I determined that the actual root is in this upper section, and so I got rid of the lower one. So moving on to our third iteration. I'm going to repeat steps A through E. So my lower bound is 0 0.75 and my upper bound is 1. And I'm going to substitute these values into my equation and calculate my estimate for the root, which is 0 0.875. The next thing I'm going to do is calculate the function value at the lower bound and the root estimate. And that gives me negative 2.34375 and negative 0 0.83203. I'm going to multiply these two terms together. And that's going to give me 1.95007. And this product is greater than zero. So that means we have the same function sign. In this case, they're both negative, And the root is in the upper section of our bounds. So if we need to perform another iteration, we're going to set the lower bound equal to our most recent root estimate, which is 0 0.875. And our upper bound will stay the same. The last thing we'll do is calculate the error. In this case, our most recent estimate is 0 0.875, and our previous estimate is 0 0.75. And that will give us an error of 14.29%, which is less than our previous iteration but it's still more than 10, so we will need to perform a fourth iteration. Before we do that though, I am going to graph my third iteration. So this became my lower bound. This is my upper, and my root estimate is somewhere right in there. And so it's kind of hard to tell, but the actual root is in the upper section, which is what we determined, and we got rid of the lower section. Alright. 
step five is to perform iteration four. So I'm going to define my bounds. And this will be 0 0.875 and 1. Next, I'm going to calculate my root estimate. And then I'm going to calculate the function values that I need. I'm going to multiply these values together. And that is going to give me negative 0 0.3535. And this product is less than 0. So that means that we have opposite function signs and that our actual root is in the lower section. And therefore, if we need to perform a fifth iteration, we're going to set our upper bound equal to our root estimate. And our lower bound will stay the same. Last thing we need to do is calculate our error. So our current root estimate is 0 0.9375. And our previous root estimate is 0 0.875. And that will give us an error of 6.7%, which is awesome because this is less than the 10% error that we were restricted by in the problem. And so therefore, we found the answer to our problem, which is that our estimate for the root is 0 0.9375. So technically, we're done. The last thing I want to do is graph our fourth iteration, just for consistency. So this guy became our lower bound, and this guy was our upper bound. And we determined that the root estimate was somewhere right in here. And that our actual root is in this little tiny lower section. So we got rid of this really tiny upper section. And that's it. So I hope this video helped you guys better understand the bisection method.